In this tutorial, we'll cover the basics of metadata work. This is one of the prime functions of V4 5 Pro, and the many advanced features help make it a go-to app for this kind of work. Metadata can be defined as the information we know about a particular asset, which in this case is audio. Metadata formats, however, are not universal. Not all formats are read by all applications, and so we try to optimize the metadata to make it as compatible as we can. For a more in-depth treatment of metadata and their formats, look to our white paper on our site. Before we get into the many built-in metadata features in V4.5 Pro, let's address a very likely scenario, and that is, you already have information about your files in some other application, likely accessible via text, and need to marry it to a directory of sounds. SoundMiner has both import and export options designed for this. To bring in text, you have two options. One is a simple import, whereby SoundMiner checks that the columns within your text match our schema and that the file name field matches actual files in a directory. If all of that matches, you'll be guided through the process. A second option allows you to take an existing SoundMiner database, export it, then open it up in a preferred spreadsheet, make whatever changes you want to any of the missing or existing cells, and then remerge it back. This option, unlike the simple import, uses a unique database record ID to update existing records when remerging. To do a simple export, simply pick and organize the columns you want, because the export follows a what you see is what you get principle. Select the files you want and go to the Database Dump Query to Text option. This will create a text file that is easily opened by just about any spreadsheet application. If you want a more thorough how-to, a dedicated tutorial for this process exists and is part of your 4.5 Pro welcome email. If you need it again and can't find it, contact support at soundminer.com and always remember to identify yourself with your iLock user ID or your sales order number. Okay, so back to working inside of V4.5 Pro. The most basic way to add metadata to a file is manually. You can click on a field and use the E key to enable editing. Enter in your data and hit return or enter. Now the information is currently stored in an active database, but real metadata means embedding it into a file. And to do that, you need to select the file or files and either use the main database options here or use the contextual menu, which you can access by using control click to do the same. No one wants to do this for hundreds or thousands of files, so there are a series of batch functions we will briefly visit to help you determine which one is appropriate for your current task. The first batch option is the detail info window in this menu. You can also use the quick key command I. If you have multiple selected, then a change here gets applied to all of them. The window confirms at the bottom how many files are being affected, and you can navigate through them using the arrow keys if you wish to override something. Remember to hit save and always embed afterwards. The admin button here gives you access to the most common advanced features, like fixing title case, batch setting a field, copying from fields, adding prefixes or suffixes, prepending, appending, creating ascending numbers, and so forth. All of this can be applied from this menu. I'll show you a quick example. Let's say I'm working on assigning a source, a collection or CD code, to a set of files. I can batch set this easily, like so. Notice, I'm going to add an underscore at the end because our source format here at SoundMiner is designed to list the code and track separated by an underscore. This is explained in our white paper, but Following this format automatically will populate the volume and track fields in our metadata schema. As you can see here, the files selected have been batch modified. Now, I'll use the numbering feature to give each of these tracks a unique number in ascending order. I'm going to select the two-digit paradigm starting at 1. I have quickly and easily created a unique item code and track numbering, and these are now populated in the volume field and track field. If you see the value in these key features, then you're really going to like the workflow pane. It's accessed right here, just above the waveform. The workflow pane provides building blocks that you can apply to a selection of records. 
actions are chained together one after another so you can set up a script made up of multiple steps and unlike the admin window actions are not done in memory making this option much better when you want to affect large numbers of files say 50,000 records at a time. Your created workflows can also be stored as presets and recalled at any time. A dedicated workflow tutorial exists if you want to see this power in action. In addition, V4.5 Pro has a very powerful find and replace feature. You can find and replace any set of characters easily, and you can even preview before committing. But what makes this pane really powerful is the regex engine. For those not familiar with regex, or regular expression, it's a text string that uses specialized shortcuts to identify patterns. Now before your eyes glaze over, I won't be launching into a detailed lecture on this, but rather show you quickly some examples of the power beyond simple find and replace. Let's say I have a file name or field information like this, or even a series of files with this formatting. All I want is the first part so I can use that as my CD code and track. By checking regex and entering first a non-greedy search of characters up to the first underscore, plus the character up until the second underscore, and then all or a greedy search for all remaining characters, I'm replicating the pattern here. By entering in $1, I'm telling it to discard everything but the first part of the pattern, so in one keystroke, it goes from this to this. I just saved myself hours of work. You can learn more about regex here, and it really doesn't mean you need to be a coder. If you've worked with Excel in any advanced capacity, this is no more difficult. V4.5 Pro also has a powerful field build feature. This is used to either build a field by combining data from other fields, or it can be used to build a new file name. It's accessed in the same contextual menu where Find and Replace is found. When you wish to combine fields, you enter the exact field name enclosed by triangular brackets, and you must assign a number priority to each one in case the length needs to be cropped to match your designated character limitation. As you can see, it shows you what the resulting change will produce. There are also a number of options you can employ noted in the manual that do things like remove vowels, remove spaces, change your caps, and so forth. This can be applied to fields as well as file names, so you can rename all your files on output using the same technique. Another useful feature is the multi-tag editor. This is a grid of preset tags that are customizable and help maintain standard tagging across your database. Let's take the mood field, which is empty for these selected records. I'll bring up the mood palette of tags and begin clicking the appropriate buttons, and you can see the keywords are being added to the mood field. This helps to maintain a standardization. And like most operations, every step can be undone. Other presets can also be set up to appear directly in the Edit Field window, and you can assign metadata directly from existing data in a field here. Important to most metadata is adding artwork. There are multiple ways to do this in V4.5 Pro. For example, if a JPEG exists alongside a set of records in a folder, the app will assume you want that image attached to all the files, so when scanning the files, the artwork is auto-assigned. You can manually assign it in the contextual menu. Or, even simpler, you can drag an image onto the browser, thereby assigning it to all visible items. V4.5 Pro has built-in automatic artwork compression, so if you inadvertently drop an excessively large image file, it will downsize it to optimal settings. But be aware, most other apps don't do this, so if you see bloating, check who added the artwork to the metadata. And if you quickly wanted to find files with no artwork, you can do that in the hammer wrench menu. In addition to artwork, V4.5 Pro has the ability to analyze your music for key and BPM information. Located in the Hammer Wrench menu is this option. It will be applied to whatever you have selected in your browser, and when complete, it'll populate the BPM and key fields. And for those looking to expand power beyond, there's the Script Engine which allows users to either write their own process or ask us to write one for them. For example, any repeated action can be scripted. 
there are a set of default scripts built into SoundMiner, and they're accessed here in the contextual menu. There are plenty of possibilities here. For example, if you have requests to output text of your metadata in a specific format for a specific client, you can create a custom script for this. If you wanted to validate your library to make sure the composer field is always filled out, that too can be scripted. In fact, some validation scripts are already included. Each of these are explained in the welcome email when you get V4.5 Pro. If you find you need something expanded and don't know how, just email us at support at soundminer.com.